autopilots are back with another video for the A320E type rating course. This lesson is on the emergency descent, covering both the theory with a practical demonstration. To jump to the practical, skip to this time. We hope you enjoy, and please like and subscribe. Welcome to this lesson on emergency descents on the Airbus A320. This lesson will be broken down into two parts. Theory, where we will be discussing causes of an emergency descent, actions following an emergency descent, and the priorities and threats that should be considered in this scenario. Following this, we will look at a practical example. Ultimately, the reason for conducting an emergency descent is due to the triggering or the inevitable triggering of the cabin pressure excess cabin altitude alert. The crew will initiate an emergency descent if the following are excessive and not controllable, the cabin altitude and the cabin rate of climb. The cabin pressure controllers, CPC, will typically aim to limit but not restrict cabin altitude to 8,000 feet. We can view the cabin altitude, along with other pressurization components, on the ECAM pressure page. Cabin altitude can also be displayed on the cruise page of the ECAM, along with the cabin vertical speed for more effective monitoring. The cabin altitude will start flashing red when it goes above 8,800 feet. Typically, there are a few causes of a cabin altitude above 8,000 feet. Structural damage. This is usually accompanied with a loud bang. Expect a high cabin VS and an almost instant triggering. A small leak can also cause excess cabin altitude. This is more subtle, so whilst cabin VS will still rise, expect this to do so at a slower rate. There could also be a foggy look in the cabin. Another cause is a CPC 1 and 2 fault. Usually this comes with an ECAM, but if it is mismanaged, then this can trigger a cabin altitude warning. Following the excess cabin altitude alert, it is absolutely critical you get your carry out the appropriate actions. The emergency descent is split into two steps. Step 1. Apply the memory items. We will look at these shortly. Step 2. Perform the ECAM actions or the QRH read and do actions. The first step memory items gives priority to the following. Protect yourself. Fly the aircraft. Protect the passengers. Therefore, the first thing we will do is put on our oxygen masks. In the memory items, as PF, your priority after protecting yourself is to fly the aircraft. The memory items for an emergency descent are focused on the FCU, as the automatics are still engaged. Working from right to left, your actions are turn pull, turn, pull, pull. The altitude knob should be set to flight level 100, unless there is terrain affecting this. In which case, set it to the relevant MSA. Set a heading off track to minimize the conflict with other aircraft below you. For speed, initially pull this knob. This is because if you have structural damage, Airbus recommends you keep your current speed. If you don't have structural damage, you can adjust the speed in the second step actions. It is the role of the PF to announce the FMA and the PM to monitor them to ensure that the selections are appropriate. In a high pressured situation, there are some slips that can be made, such as altitude knob not pulled, speed set incorrectly, or the aircraft remains in nav mode. If auto thrust is not active, move the thrust levers to idle. Select full speed brake. At high altitudes, ensure a good monitoring of VLS. Especially at cruise flight levels, this can shoot up above your current speed. After the first step, the crew should refer to the ECAM or the QRH and perform a read and do checklist. The goal of the second step actions are to refine the first step actions, look at any extra considerations, such as the landing gear or engine protection, notify air traffic control and passengers, and passenger protection, including manually releasing passenger oxygen masks. There are some further considerations to take into account. Firstly, remember that any TCAS avoidance alerts should be taken as a priority over the emergency descent. Also, when at an appropriate altitude, the oxygen masks can be removed. Following this, the crew should close the oxygen stowage mask compartment, press the press to reset oxygen control slide. 
This deactivates the mask microphone and cuts off the oxygen. Now let's jump into Microsoft Flight Simulator, where we will see a practical demonstration. Master warning. Cabin pressure uncontrollable. Emergency descent. How do you read? Read U5. Read U5 as well. Thrust idle. Open descent. Heading. Check. Okay, first stage actions complete, so read ECAM. Cabin pressure, excess cabin altitude. This is confirmed on the SD page. My radios, ECAM actions. Crew oxygen masks on. They're on. Descent, initiate. Initiated. If rapid decompression, emergency descent, flight level 100. Level 100 set. Speed brake, full. Roger. Speed, max appropriate. Speed set. Engine mode selector. Ignition. ATC. Notify. Mayday, mayday, mayday. Airbus 123. Emergency descent. Stand by. Cabin crew. Advise. Cabin crew emergency descent. Clear cabin pressure? Clear. Transponder 7700 is set. Flight level 100 set. If cabin altitude above 14,000 feet, PAX oxygen masks, man, on. Clear cabin pressure? Clear. Cabin pressure, low differential pressure. Differential pressure at zero. Aircraft VS, reduce. Disregard, clear cabin pressure. Status. No resets. No expanded checklists. Remove status. Status removed. ECAM actions complete. Okay, so let's run a DODAR. Diagnosis. We had a loss of cabin pressure because of structural damage. We are currently in an emergency descent to flight level 100, over water. Options. Continue to Madeira, divert, or return to Lisbon. Decide. What are your thoughts? We have Porto Santo about 120 miles in front of us. I think this is a safer option than doing a complex approach into Madeira, and Lisbon is a lot further away and behind us. I agree. Also Porto Santo has a straight-in RNP approach, a long runway and the weather is good. Maintenance is limited, but that isn't a priority right now. Are you happy we divert to Porto Santo? Yes. Our options are limited, but Porto Santo is the best out of them. Okay, moving on with the Doda. A sign. I will notify ATC of our intentions. Can you set up for the RNP approach into Porto Santo? I will then hand you control whilst I speak to the cabin crew and passengers. Then we can brief and review our plan. That's understood. Airbus 123, leveling off at flight level 100, 
Our intentions are to divert to Porto Santo. Thanks for tuning in to another lesson by the Autopilots. We hope you have found this useful. We are currently putting together an E-Type rating course on our channel and also releasing Airbus-related content. So subscribe to become an Airbus Pro. Until next time, happy landings.